All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Rochester Hills Public Library. My name is Amalia Weber, and I'm the program specialist here. And I'd like to welcome you to this evening's program, The History of Stagecrafters in Royal Oak. Before we get started, I'd like to take care of a few housekeeping details. Firstly, tonight's program will be recorded and available to view about one week from tonight on our YouTube page and on the RHPL website shortly after. We ask audience members to please silence or turn off their cell phones before we begin in order to avoid any disturbances during the presentation. The Friends of the RHPL 7th Annual Wine, Wit, and Wisdom Fundraiser is taking place here at the library on Saturday, April 30th from 6.30 to 10 p.m. Participants can attend two speaker presentations from a choice of six and enjoy a buffet dinner, drinks, a silent auction, and a 50-50 raffle. Registration forms are available at the circulation desk, or you can visit rhpl.org slash friends for more information. Our next program is a concert, Singing the Good Old Songs Again with Jackie Davidson and Gary Brandt, which will take place on Sunday, April 10th at 2 p.m. You can sign up for that at calendar.rhpl.org. And now, without further ado, please welcome our presenters, the Stagecrafters Community Theater Group. Hello, everyone. My name is Erin McKay, and I'm Stagecrafters Marketing and Events Manager. I'm joined by Carol Windorf, who is a lifetime member. Um, so Carol is a lifetime member, and that means that she's been a member for over 25 years at Stagecrafters. So we're so honored to have her here tonight with us. And without further ado, we're going to jump right in. So as a theater group, I'm going to start off by saying, instead of saying what we do best and telling you, I'm going to show you with a YouTube video. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a little glimpse of what we do here at Stagecrafters. Um, so we're going to go over, this is our agenda for the evening. We're going to start talking about what Stagecrafters is, the early history. We're going to go into the International Theater Olympiad. We're going to talk about the Wurlitzer organ and the significance to our theater. Uh, we're going to talk about the current operations, some famous alumni, awards, community partnership, milestones, and then we're going to wrap it up with some questions. So Stagecrafters, we are a live community theater located in Royal Oak, Michigan, right on Lafayette. Um, we are a nonprofit organization. We have a board of directors and a membership of about 200 people. We've got three venues, main stage, second stage, and youth theater, and I will talk more about those later on. Ticket sales are a major part of our revenue at Stagecrafters, and uh, we also do fundraising. And right now we have a staff of four people, so I'm one of four staff members at Stagecrafters. So I'm going to hand things over to Carol. She's going to start talking about the first decade. So we're starting back in 1956 when two students who lived in Clawson, one was an MSU student and the other one was a high school, Sally Bowes and Robert Johnson. They published a call in the Clawson Troy Times inviting people to come form a theatrical group, which they called the Thesbets. But there wasn't much interest. So they did a second call. and. That drew a lot more people. With $100 from the Clawson Community Club, they renamed the, the group the Clawson Community Club Players. And uh, from there, next slide, Johnson and Bose were drafted to take charge of the amateur talent show, which is part of the Clawson Fourth of July celebration. And after that, another slide, um, we got involved in the 
all kinds of Clawson events. And this is the parade for the 4th of July celebration. So we did, did many things for the community. Um, we began, began rehearsing in people's homes and, I'm sorry. We be, what's the next slide? Okay, there we go, thank you. We began rehearsing in people's homes and garages as well as a vacant building on 14 Mile Road. And to promote our first show, we had a unicyclist and a man with fires in downtown Royal Oak, I'm downtown Clawson, um, handing them out. And then in 1956, same year, just a few months later, we opened Noel Coward's Blythe Spirit in a school on John M Street in Clawson. Admission was a dollar at the door. We elected officers, adopted bylaws, registered as a nonprofit corporation with the state of Michigan. And after performing in Clawson High Schools for about five years, we decided to move to the John Page Junior High in, in uh, Madison Heights. And we had to rent a moving van to lug everything over and bring it back after, after being done with the show. New slide. And we have um, a plaque here that honors those founding members, including Bob Johnson and Sally Bowes. And we started to um, affiliate with Lamphere Schools. We changed the name to Stagecrafters. That was in 1961. And we started to search for a more permanent space. Change slide. In 1963, Clawson built a new city hall. So we got to rent or lease their old Clawson City offices for $40 a month, which paid for utilities, which is pretty cool. That facility also housed a six by eight foot jail, where in the basement, where the children of the players liked to play while their parents worked. And uh, in 1964, we produced our first musical, The Pajama Game. And then we got evicted from the, bu the building in um, Clawson because they decided to raise it and make a parking lot. And uh, thank goodness, Lawson, Lumler, and Clawson donated a barn for our t storage of uh, props and set pieces. <coughs> Excuse me, lost my place. And we always cooperated as much as we could with local businesses. We continue to do that until today, and Aaron is a big part of that, so. Next slide. 1968, two years later, our 135 members purchased a small church and an annex building at 176 Bower Street in Clawson, and we moved everything to that location. Our set construction and our props and um, just everything we could. But now there was a mortgage to pay, so to raise funds, we rented some space to the Emerson Unitarian Fellowship and some to use it as a church on Sundays. We presented puppet shows and held fashion shows and rummage sales. We also got involved at that time with CTAM along with 50 other community theaters throughout the state of Michigan. It gave us good connections and lots of information. Next slide. What is CTAM? Community Theater Association of Michigan. Thank you, Howard. <laughs> Um, in 1971, after we'd painted the whole interior and exterior of the playhouse, stagecrafters tested the space on Bower Street with folding chairs on risers and performed arsenic and old lace. And thus began several years of a hybrid season with the big shows at Lamphere High School where they could seat 700 people and the smaller ones at the Bower Street Playhouse. The members' children wanted to get involved in theater by this time, so in 1972 we started a program for youngsters ages 12 to 17. And they called themselves ragamuffins, but we called them rams for short, R-A-M-S. So in 1973, the Lamphere teachers went on strike, which threatened cancellation of our show. So we very quickly made arrangements to perform Lion in Winter at the Playhouse using a moving van as wing space 
for set pieces and costume changes. And it was parked right outside the side of the building where there was a side door and they could get in at the stage level and make costume changes. Well, that was a wake-up call. Now we were subject to the uh, schedules and operations of the schools. 1975, we installed a, a 120 permanent theater seats in the Bowers Playhouse, and we opened with our first full season in that location. And now, with fewer seats, we needed more performances so that we could earn enough on ticket sales to support ourselves. Next slide. The third decade. In 1983, we were chosen to participate in an international theater exchange. We partnered with a company of 10 in St. Albans, England, and in March 1984, our troupe went to England with a visit to a small planet to perform at their Abbey Theater. But at home, we were still suffering with growing pains. The Bower Street Playhouse, although it was intimate and functional, constrained our growth. It had a small stage that lacked wing space, and it limited the shows that we could perform. It had a turnbuckle 10 feet above the stage that uh, cast a shadow on the stage and made it difficult for lighting and scenic design, Tim. <laughs> and it also had a basement that flooded every time it rained and risked our costumes that were stored down there. So we began to search for another building. There was talk of a building, of building a domed structure like the one near Northland Shopping Center, if any of you remember that. There was a playhouse in it. Uh, there was also a suggestion to build a theater on top of a parking structure, which seemed a little strange. In 1984, Stagecrafters member Hal Robinson, an attorney who lived in Royal Oak with his office in its downtown, he approached Royal Oak City Manager Louis McDaniel with just that proposal. We'd like to build a theater on top of a parking structure in downtown Royal Oak. Next slide. So the Washington Theater um, was in downtown Royal Oak, and the city manager knew that the Downtown Development Authority in Royal Oak had just purchased it. It had been ab abandoned after a fire on the stage. It was a former vaudeville theater, and it had become a second-rate movie house that hadn't been used in years. Mr. McDaniel, the city, and the Royal Oak DDA offered to sell the abandoned Washington Theater to stagecrafters at a modest price if we were willing to rehabilitate the facility. In the fall of 1984, the stagecrafters board called a meeting of the members in the darkened auditorium of the old Washington and explained the opportunity. I was there. Who else was there? All right. <laughs> and. It was so exciting. There had been a fire on stage. It was in a sorry state. But we saw the fly space up above the stage and all voted yes. It was wonderful. Dozens of us pledged $100 and 100 hours of work to commit to the success of the venture. With donations, insurance, oh, excuse me, we purchased the building for $71,000. With donations, insurance money from the fire, the sale of the Bowers Playhouse, and a loan of $125,000 from the Royal Oak National Bank of Royal Oak. Well, the form, yeah, it had been Wayne Oakland, right? We were poised to start. In February 1985, stagecrafters took possession of this building and renovations began. We soon, <coughs> excuse me, next slide. It was in really terrible condition. That's the stage you see in the front. Of course, we're working on it, so it's, it's really a mess. And, uh, Question. So, so what happened? So the front of the theater had the fire instead? Was that? No. Let me see if it becomes clear as we go along. Um, the original thought was the city was going to sell it to a, the theater to a restaurateur. And they were going to take off what they called the neck of the theater, sometimes the throat, and build a restaurant there. But that fell through, and we bought it. 
but we couldn't handle that much building. It was uh, more to keep warm and more to take care of and so on. So that was destroyed. And it sat, it sat vacant for decades. It sat vacant for a long time. But that was a, it was a commercial building with offices in it. It was basically the marquee and a ticket booth on the street of Washington. And then you walked down a long corridor and came into the area that's now our lobby in the Baldwin. We had to build a new entrance on the side of the street. Um, it would have. You're right. You're right. Paulette is our offense manager at Stagecrafters. Two of four staff members. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, next slide. This is a view of on the right the balcony, which was like a dumping ground. And on the left, you can see another portion of the balcony and the north part of the north wall of the auditorium on the main stage. Next slide. This is another view, almost the same, but you can see the full length of the uh, house with all the red seats in it and how decrepit the building was. The, the, the paint was crumbling. It was this gaudy color combination, uh, and, 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 but it was ours. <laughs> Next slide. Now this is a wonderful slide that um, Aaron found that shows the whole thing in all of its grandeur and redness. Um, the, uh, the balcony up above, and I, I swear we know the people up there, I just can't get them big enough to know who they are. And then the whole theater from the stage to the uh, back of the house with 1,200 seats combined between the, uh, the balcony and the stage below. Howard. Um, I was one of the people who was working on the theater at that point. If you look up at the top right hand side, you see that white area there? Exactly. That is just one piece of the deterioration of the plaster work that was in the entire building. Ah. The, the roof had leaked for years and the plaster uh, Plaster work, the phosphorus, and the lead, lack of it, um, had totally deteriorated, so that there were huge amounts of areas, and you can see some of the damage also in the center there on that white. You can see just that's just paint chipping, but there were huge areas about you know five to six feet in uh, length, and you can see right to the, the infrastructure of the building. So all that had to be repaired, and we'll see in a second. I'm assuming the uh, the scaffold. That's the next slide. Let's move to it. <laughs> so we removed all the seats and put scaffolding all around on the main floor and began the restoration of the interior. Um, not much more needed than that. It was pretty impressive. It was very impressive. Let's, let's There were a select, select few who could work up there, right. <laughs> Let's go to the next slide. Now you can see them doing some of the details, some of the gold. Uh, I think this one on the left is Amy's shell. The next slide. So I think she's in this one too, standing up. Uh, but it took, you, know, you could imagine how many hours it took to finish that painting. Uh, the next slide, please. Okay, here we have uh, the, the new seats have been installed. On the left, you can see the blue seats. And at the top of the, the slide, on the right, we've, uh, we've taken out the seats in the back. And on the right, we're putting in a handicapped bathroom for the public. And on the left, there you go, is what will be the new lobby for people who enter the the building. And to the right here is um, just some detail of one of the walls. I think we see a, well, we see a, the full theater a couple times too. Well, we subtract, subtract seven, 372 from, yeah. and then we have uh, an upstairs. We built, go back a slide, okay? I remember that the original theater had about 1,200 seats. Yes, 1,200, right. There. 
So there were, there were seats up in the upper level too. So we have a small stage now up there that has 100 seats in it and 372 downstairs. So that's almost 500 seats. So all the rest of the 1,200 were gone. Yeah, thank you. Okay, next, now the next one. Okay, in the middle of all this, and we're getting close to opening a show, we had the doors open because it was now summertime and it was getting warm and it was nice to have the fresh air. And people would wander in off the streets and they'd talk about, well, we were giving them tours. You know, we were taking our valuable time and taking them on tours of the building. And then Merton Harris shows up and donates a 1926 Wurlitzer organ. Now, I don't want to let Howard go on this because he'll be done, he, he won't be done till midnight. But <laughs> Howard, <laughs> Howard and another member, he wasn't even a member, he was an organ specialist, an organist, took on the project. And this was a monstrous organ. The original theater organ that was in the Baldwin had been removed in the 40s, in the 1940s. But this was a theater organ as well. And there's a difference that I don't know between a theater organ and a church organ. But there were, oh my goodness, some 600 to 800 pipes, 600 leather bellows, and miles of wire. And we had to find a place for them because we didn't have a place at the Baldwin. I think the first place they found was the Tribune building. Yeah. And, and it moved a few times after that. It took nine years to restore it. And we still got Howard. So he, <laughs> yeah. so this, this may come back up in the rest of the show. But I wanted to interrupt all of our renovations with this wonderful donation. And we were, we were already up to here with renovating things. And now we have an organ. But it was fantastic. Yeah, he worked at the Baldwin Theater, and then he worked at the city, for the city of Royal Oak, yeah. Let's go to the next slide. So this is a fisheye photo from the balcony of the whole theater. We're still cleaning up. We're not done yet. Those four guys on stage are the quartet rehearsing for the Music Man. But it's a wonderful photo, and we got it done. And... Uh, 1985 marked a big milestone for stagecrafters. We opened the Music Man. When is it? Next slide. We opened the Music Man on September 20th. We go back, we just got this building in February. So we've had a matter of months, seven months, to restore it and make it safe so that people can come and see our shows. Well, we had to have a. Um, Right up until right up until the season closed in June before. So yes, took possession in February, finished out our season in Clausen, and in September opened the Music Man. The um, the city told us they would give us an occupancy the day of the opening night. The city withheld our occupancy permit, and we had to promise to have a volunteer fire marshal in the building for every performance until a sprinkling system was installed. And believe it or not, we didn't get our full occupancy permit until 1992. Yeah, Howard. Uh, on the right-hand side there is Hal. Is a guy named Hal Robinson. Right there. He's the one that Robinson, his spouse is here. He just carried the ball. He, was, he and Alan McMillan. And in the lower left corner, I think there's a picture of Howard, isn't there? With a tie? Do you see that? Can you put your little pointer in there? I think that's Howard. <laughs> Another reason for putting this slide in here is that oftentimes people don't rec realize how many people it takes to put on a show. This is the entire cast, and there must have been 45 or 50 people in the cast. And the rest of them are all backstage people or orchestra. Down in the front, you see um, 
some of the orchestra members and and scattered around around the edges you see some people who don't seem to have costumes on because they were working backstage it was a wonderful night um, what's next okay the sprinkling system we didn't we did get that in eventually that evening this show opened with you know, we all had tears of pride on our in our eyes because it was a it was very emotional and with help from the community we had restored the beautiful baldwin theater to its original splendor and it was alive again so if we had done the work it was going to be torn down and made into a park. or a restaurant <laughs> um Okay, and so this is at 1986, we're in the Baldwin, and the success is overwhelming, but there's still much to do. And now it's Aaron's turn to talk. It sure is, thanks so much, Carol. Uh -huh. So the fourth decade, from 1986 to 1996, we had a lot happen in this decade as well. We received the Michigan Equity Grant to build the Annex, which is currently where my office is, so I'm very happy about that. We inaugurated the second stage. So this photo right here, you might be thinking, what the heck is going on, which is a fair question to ask. So that is a show, Metamorphoses, we did a couple years ago, and we actually built a pool on stage. It was pretty cool. Um, another thing we did, so this obviously came later. Uh, second stage, though, was in this, uh, this decade. Uh, we had a huge milestone. We did fundraising to pay off our mortgage. So we met the challenge through the Royal Oak DDA. They forgave half of our mortgage. And so at one of our shows, we actually burned the mortgage on stage in true actor fashion. So that was something to really be excited about. Um, we were granted our occupancy permit in 1992. We became debt free, which was a very successful, exciting milestone to hit. And then we hired our first executive director at this time also. Um, so the in International Theater Olympiad 1987 was a very cool opportunity where we were able to work with Wayne State and host theater groups from all over the world. So some of the shows that would be short one or two act plays would be at Wayne State and the other shows would be at Stagecrafters. So it was the course of two weekends and families actually got to host some of these actors and these troops. So it was really an awesome opportunity like the headline reads to emphasizes world unity. So it was, it's something that we're very proud of, and that was under the International Amateur Theater Association. Um, just a little bit more information about the Wurlitzer organ. Uh, took 20 volunteers, nine years, and $8,000 to restore this organ. Um, the first organ concert was in 1995, and the most recent time we used the organ was during one of our youth theater shows in early 2020, haphazardly ever after. So that was exciting to be able to use the organ again. 1996 to present, so this is currently how the interior of our theater looks as of a week ago. So um, obviously the Baldwin Blue is still looking very crispy and, and very professional. Um, we're very proud of it and our membership works very hard to maintain this beautiful look. So currently, um, this is how our stage looks. We're getting ready for Mamma Mia. We actually put a pit cover over our, our orchestra pit. It allows us to Anytime there's performers, if they want to have a little bit more of a close connection with the audience, it allows that. So where is the orchestra going to be, you ask? Well, they're going to be right there, just underground, kind of. So if you come see Mamma Mia, you will hear them, but you might not see them. Yes. Oh, this is not the set. It's, it's, uh, it's in progress right now. This was for a uh, publicity opportunity we had a couple weeks ago. So right now, this is how the current exterior of the Baldwin Theater looks. Um, on the left-hand side, this is our marquee. It can be seen from Lafayette Avenue. We've been doing something kind of fun this season where we pick quotes from the shows that we do. So can anybody tell me what quote this play, or what play this quote is from? A Midsummer Night's Dream by William Shakespeare. That is correct. Um, and then this is currently how the entrance to the Baldwin Theater looks. So it's kind of in a strange place, some people might say. It's kind of in the middle of the alley, right between Washington and Lafayette. Well, the reason for that is when we took back the Washington Theater, we got rid of the neck. So the, this was built by us, the new entrance, the Baldwin Theater. So here are the Stagecrafters venues, a little more in detail, as I mentioned. Main stage, we have 
372 seats on our main stage, second stage, upstairs 100 seats, and then our youth theater um, is a great opportunity for youth members between the ages of 8 and 17 to have an opportunity to do live theater, whether it's working backstage or whether it's on stage. Uh, it's really about harnessing that love for theater at an early age. So here's some photos from some of our recent productions on main stage. This was 9 to 5, the musical. This was Cinderella. We have, um, these are some of the photos from our second stage productions. Um, right here, this is Bug by Tracy Letts. So this is actually a movie starring Harry Connick Jr. and Ashley Judd. It's a psychological thriller, so this kind of goes right up there with the edgy contemporary vibe that second stage has. But this was, this was a very successful show. A lot of people really liked it. We have Detroit 67 right here, which was about the 1967 riots in Detroit. Right here we had Frankenstein, which was uh, based on the novel by Mary Shelley, and that took place over Halloween of 2019. That was very successful also. And then right here is Metamorphoses, again, the show with the pool. Uh, it was a very, very interesting uh, way they did it. They had to drain the pool after every weekend and then fill it back up using one sink upstairs. Uh, for youth theater, this is our most recent show, Midsummer Night's Dream. We've done Beauty and the Beast Jr. And then this is the show, as I mentioned, where we use the Wurlitzer organ haphazardly ever after. So just talking a little bit about, um, we offer a scholarship for our youth theater uh, members, and it's the Dorita McNee Youth Theater Scholarship, and it's in honor of uh, Jennifer Dorita and Danny McNee. And basically, cast members and anyone in youth theater can earn points through various ways of participating, whether they're in a show, whether they do the set strike, which is destroying the set after closing weekend, any special projects, or if they're on the SYT play reading, play reading subcommittee. And then you need 300 points in order to be considered for the scholarship. Okay, so some people might wonder what it takes to put on a musical. So we made this infographic based on our production Ragtime back in 2019. So right off the bat, cast size, 60 people. That's a huge musical. Um, it's pretty cool, though, to hear 60 voices on stage at one time. It's kind of angelic in a way. Um, so, you know, we also had 40 crew members, which was huge. But something I really want to point out is the $15,600 spent on wardrobe. We got about 16 boxes of clothing from a rental place in California. 1,000 pieces of clothing made 215 looks, so that averaged about three costumes per actor. So that was really something spectacular to have a production that we put on like this. So uh, we're very proud of our alumni at Stagecrafters. We have all four of these folks have started at Stagecrafters. So Kristen Bell, you might know her as a voice in Frozen. Uh, she was also the voice in Gossip Girl, and she's been in the show recently, The Good Place. Yana Perot right here. She uh, made her debut on Broadway in Jagged Little Pill, and then she's on Hamilton right now in one of the tours of Hamilton. Jeffrey Seller is a producer of Hamilton, actually, and he also did Rent and In the Heights. And then Sutton Foster has won two Tony Awards for Thoroughly Modern Millie and Anything Goes. And I wanted to show you a quick video with an interview uh, with Jeffrey Seller. I grew up in Oak Park, Michigan. You know, it started in the fourth grade Purim play, and then it was the, the fifth grade play I wrote called Adventureland with me and my friends. And then, of course, it was uh, um, auditioning for Stagecrafters in seventh grade for a play called Speaking, Speaking of Murder, um, which I thought, well, I'm going to be a professional now because I'm in an adult play at Stagecrafters. And, uh, and uh, getting my parents and some other wonderful people to drive me the seven miles from Nine Mile and Coolidge to uh, 14 Mile and Maine uh, for rehearsals every day. You know, people always ask me, how did you become a producer? And I went from being in that place, speaking of murder at Stagecrafters in seventh grade, to then being in uh, a ragamuffin youth theater play called 
uh, 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 popcorn pee. And um, it was very quickly after I was in plays that I asked this question, who gets to pick the play? The moment that I asked that question, who gets to pick the play, and then served on the play reading committee at Stagecrafters, that was my first action as a producer, and that's why to this day I am forever grateful for Stagecrafters for helping me acquire the skills and um, develop the talents I had to work in the theater. So yes, we're very, very proud of our alumni. That was a wonderful interview from Jeffrey Seller. Um, and, and we just are so excited anytime we hear good news about any of our alumni here. We've uh, won some very nice awards the past couple of years. Um, we're very honored to win our Detroit Best Community Theater uh, the last few years we've won this award. We've won some wonderful awards through Broadway World Detroit, including Best Musical, Best Set Design, Best Musical Direction, and Best Sound Design. And then Apartment Therapy, it was uh, an article online about why you should move to Royal Oak, Michigan, where we were mentioned that we are the hidden gem of Royal Oak, which was a very cool uh, way of being recognized. So how we fit into the community, um, we're very involved with the Royal Oak Chamber of Commerce as well as the Berkeley Chamber of Commerce. We also work with the Royal Oak Downtown Development Authority. Um, we do some downtown restaurant partnerships uh, each show this past season, we've been working with uh, dinner and a show bundle with local restaurants to get more people excited about coming downtown. And then we participate in different downtown, oops, different downtown events. Uh, so right here we had Cinderella and Prince Charming perform at the Royal Oak Food Truck Rally. We had Cinderella reading to some kids at the Proving Grounds Coffee Shop in Royal Oak. And then this is at Spooktacular this past Halloween. Uh, so our community partnerships, we started our Community Cares campaign in 2019 as an effort to better connect with our community. So we, we wanted to ask ourselves, there's so many people that don't know that we're located in Royal Oak. They don't even know what Stagecrafters is. So we said, okay, we need to change that. So something we started was this Community Cares initiative to bring new audiences to our theater and be able to cross promote with different organizations. So we use this as an opportunity to partner with different nonprofits that relate to our shows. So what I mean by that is Freedom House Detroit, our first community partner, is a nonprofit in Detroit that works on helping gain their residents gain legal asylum here in the United States. So it's usually people trying to escape different kinds of persecution in African or South American countries. So the plot of Ragtime was about pursuing the American dream, and we thought, this is just a perfect partnership. So after every show, we did a curtain speech. The show was so moving. And afterward, you know, we, we had our actors up there and they talked about Freedom House. And we were so blown away with the amount of support we, we received that we ended up presenting a check for $13,425 to Freedom House. And that's what this picture is right here. In addition to two carfuls full of uh, just necessity basic items for the residents that live there so that was really awesome to do that we also raised money for gilda's club with um which is uh, an organization that helps people who are dealing with cancer in different forms so we were able to present a check for three thousand two hundred fifty three dollars after one of our comedy shows noises off mk blanket wraps we worked with two girls who make blanket wraps for the homeless in detroit so we were able to partner with them for our youth theater production. Um, Rainbow Connection right here was our most recent community partner, and we raised $2,761. It made sense because Rainbow Connection focuses on helping kids get a, get a wish who have life-threatening illnesses, and, and Cinderella was all about granting a wish to Cinderella. Um, and then another one right here in town, Clinton River Watershed Council, we raised $900 for our show, Don't Drink the Water. So some fun moments at the Baldwin that we had. Um, we had a marriage proposal back in 2018. Two people came in. Neither one of them had been there. And so the girl, uh, the, the, the guy proposed. The girl walked in, and she thought she was going to see a movie, which she wasn't too far off because it did used to be a movie theater. 
but uh, it turned out to be one of the best days of her life, so that was really exciting. Uh, we had the do -Wop project right here. That was filmed uh, just this past February, so that was very exciting. And then we had uh, Brushes with Broadway concert back in 2019. So some notable milestones I want to talk about. As Carol mentioned, the fly space at our theater is something pretty cool. A lot of theaters don't have fly space quite like that, so we have to deal with static sets. But we're able to bring in different set pieces during our shows, so that's pretty cool. So, of course, we had to take advantage of that when we flew, flew our first actor in Peter Pan in 1999. Um, and then obviously we built the pool for second stage in 2017. We used turntable technology for our show Peter and the Star Catcher in 2018. Um, we were invited to perform on the Mitch Album show uh, 760 WJR with Forever Plaid. We were featured for World Theater Day just a couple weeks ago on Channel 7. Uh, and then the doo project was filmed at the Baldwin Theater just a month ago. Uh, and then obviously I think the one of the biggest milestones right now is our Baldwin Theater turns 100 this year, so we're very excited about that. So, our upcoming show is Mamma Mia. This is a show that has been two years in the making. This show was meant to go on in May of 2020, and we all know how that went. So, here we are again. We're coming back. The cast is excited. The cast is almost all still together. There's just been a few people that needed to be replaced. May 6th to 29th, $35 each for tickets. Stagecrafters.org has all the information for you. Uh, I encourage you to check it out. Okay, so the last thing today is the ghost light. So obviously the ghost light is used as a safety precaution. When you're on stage and you, when you're dealing with a lot of expensive, heavy equipment, you need to be able to see where you're stepping. So it is a safety precaution, but there was a lot of speculation, especially during the pandemic, that the ghost light is really there until you return. So the ghost light stays on until someone turns it off when the show starts. So the ghost light stays on until we return, and that's how we look at it. So are there any questions? Thank you so much for listening today. We do have some, some treats over on the table for you. We got some water bottles and some candles. Uh, from Stagecrafters, so we would love it if everybody took one. Um, thank you so much for listening today. I'd love to uh, answer anybody's questions. Yes. Sh sure. Thank you for coming. Is anybody else? No. None whatsoever. Musicians are paid. Our orchestra, so um, one of the slides back here, we talk about, uh, where is it? Uh, there we go, $15,800. So that's, uh, so our uh, orchestra members are paid. Full production. You do not have to be a member to audition, however, we encourage it, um, of course. Uh, there is a, a rehearsal fee you pay if you're not a member.
always has the last word last. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. a true labor of love at Stagecrafters. Which show would you consider is the most successful show ever at Stagecrafters? Ooh, I might have to look at Carol. There's Andy. Excellent. Did you have a question? Which three stories are the best because they you repeat them? That's true. Mm hmm Yep. Anybody else? Any other questions? Sure. Absolutely. I think we owe a lot of that to the original uh, group of folks because uh, they curated a beautiful space for us now. And without them, I mean, we, we are so fortunate and we have our own space and just such a beautiful historic theater. And I think we owe so much of that to the original, the original people with a dream. Thank you for sharing. Yes, thank you, Mary. The fly space, yeah. So uh, uh, basically, we have a lot of fly space just with how big the stage is. We're able to drop set pieces in, so we'll have them up in the fly. That's the correct term, right? Oh, um, this one? Way back. There we go. That's a good question. I'm going to have to ask Carol because I wasn't around at that point.
and they come in and spend several hours, and those members have to be available for every performance because they don't want to change people. They have to know exactly how to operate the equipment and the stage. Everybody on the stage has special equipment. Do you want to think about that? Do they come in with the, the rigging, the extra rigging, and the harnesses and the training? They do this all the time. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Thank you all so much for coming tonight. We so appreciate it.